service during Holy Week on this Wednesday. Uh, sorry for a bit of a slow start, uh, just a couple of technical things we needed to get set up. Uh, this worship service uh, is something that we began a couple of years ago uh, at noontime during Holy Week uh, in an effort to just have uh, a time of some quiet prayer uh, in the midst of the day that we all have um, to pay attention to the week that we are in, this week between Palm Sunday, the celebration of Palm Sunday, and the celebration of Easter, and all the momentous events uh, during that time. So I welcome you to this service. I know that we're all worshiping from different places. Um, the service is set up to be quiet and contemplative. There'll be some periods of silence, uh, and there will be prayers that will be uh, read. Some of those are responsive. You can find an order of worship for this service, if you'd like, on the website of the church. Just go to the services, Sunday services, uh, up at the top and drop down to find the bulletins, or you may have received an email already. It's not necessary that you have the order of worship. You can simply listen. Uh, but if you do have it, I invite you to join in where it indicates uh, that you should. And I invite you to pray aloud. That's uh, something that helps to add to an attitude of prayer, I think. Um, I will be doing both parts since I'm here by myself, uh, but I welcome you to join in as you wish. A little bit later, we will have a time of some prayers of intercession, prayers that we're offering for other people. Uh, and so I invite you to just have that in your mind. You may have some persons or places or things that are uh, on your uh, heart, concerns, or joys to celebrate. I'll just quickly remind you that in addition to these noontime prayer services, we will have tomorrow evening, Thursday, a good a Monday Thursday service uh, that will have communion and will also be a celebration of readings known as tenebrae, which means shadows. That will be at 7 o'clock tomorrow evening. And then on Good Friday, there will be a pre-recorded service available uh, online uh, through the church website. That will be available beginning at 3 o'clock, but you can watch any time if it seems better to watch later in the afternoon or in the evening just because of your schedule, that's fine. I should mention you can also watch these prayer services later in the day um, if that's easier for you as well. Uh, Julie is running the camera for these services, and the services get uh, posted to the church website fairly promptly after they're finished. So you should be able to find them, uh, find this one later today. So we'll have a kind of a rhythm of uh, praying, of scripture passages with some silence interspersed. Um, and I invite you to just take a deep breath and find yourself uh, in the place where you are and turn your attention uh, to God and what it is that God or Jesus may want to say to you or bring to you today. We'll begin the service. I will ring a bell, and uh, when I can no longer hear the bell, then I will begin with the opening sentences, and you can respond. O God, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Those who wait for God shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Please join me in prayer, if you wish. Let us pray. Sustaining God in the midst of our day and embraced by your world, we call upon your wisdom. We draw upon your strength. We rely upon your grace. Help us to continue faithfully in your way 
by the power of the Holy Spirit, and in the name of Jesus. Amen. And let's pause just for a moment. Our hymn for this prayer service is Beneath the Cross of Jesus, and I invite you to join in singing if you wish. First scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of the prophet Isaiah, reading in the 50th chapter, beginning at the fourth verse. I mentioned yesterday that we had a reading that was considered one of the servant songs. Uh, this is true of this one as well. So I invite you to listen to these words of God coming to us from the prophet. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning, God wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, 
and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? All of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Let's pause for a few moments and just sit with those words from Isaiah. This passage offers a description of the role of servant, of the role of prophet serving God. It is a source of gratitude to one who serves, to a prophet, to have the ability to to move people and, as it said, to sustain those who are weary with a word, to have the tongue of a teacher, to be able to instruct and share wisdom, to be able to lead an exploration together of God's will. The servant is grateful for the ability to hear and consider God's word speaking about waking up each morning already with ear tuned to listen for God. And of course, there is the description of the reality that prophets and those who serve God are not always received with a warm and generous welcome, but may in fact be rejected, be the the target of, of insults and derision being struck, being insulted. But this servant takes confidence in the call from God and the knowledge that the message that is brought, the teachings that are offered, are not those merely of the servant, but have come from God. And so on every occasion when there might be a controversy or a confrontation, God is with the servant in the midst of those. And now the second lesson for this afternoon, a reading from the Gospel according to John in the 13th chapter beginning at the 21st verse. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, Very truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, He gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, Do quickly what you are going to do. Now, no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the common purse, 
Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. And let's take a few moments and just sit with this passage. This passage from the Gospel according to John relates one of the most troubling moments in the story we have for this week between Palm Sunday and Easter. The disciples have gathered together. They are celebrating the Passover together. And from that moment, that moment of devotion and fellowship. In that very moment, one of the disciples rises and leaves in order to betray Jesus to the Roman authorities. Quite often, if we aren't having this kind of a worship time during the course of the week, we may simply go from Palm Sunday and the celebration of entering joyfully into Jerusalem along with Jesus to Easter Sunday and celebrating the resurrection. And of course, we know we have some idea of the events in between Palm Sunday and the story of the resurrection, but we don't necessarily rest with those. We don't necessarily ponder them or consider them in our minds and in our hearts. And so this lesson comes to us speaking of the moment in which Judas rises and leaves to betray Jesus. Jesus knows all about this, of course. And we recognize that even though this is somehow a part of a much deeper plan through which God will offer forgiveness and eternal life to all the world, to all who would follow his son, it is still such a terrible, terrible disappointment, such a terrible rejection of Jesus teaching and healing of Jesus authority and love how can it be that disciples who so eagerly follow Jesus' instructions in preparing for the entry into Jerusalem, enabling that wonderful impromptu parade and celebration and waving of palm branches should, in the space of a few days, come to these moments in which there is betrayal and denial and rejection in which they will be left alone 
in desperation with almost no hope at all. Even in the midst of considering this particular moment, a supper, a celebration, and Judas leaving from the midst, even now we can offer our thanksgivings to God. So I invite you to join in the prayer of thanksgiving, and then we'll move into the prayers of intercession for people and places and things that we want to lift up to God. Let us pray. Generous and loving God, we thank you for your blessings without number. We bless you for the beauty of creation, for day and night, for summer and winter, for sun and rain, for seed time and harvest, for your bounty supplying all our needs. We bless you for protecting us in our weakness and renewing our strength of spirit, for guiding us as we resist evil and calling us to your truth and to your service. We praise you for sending Jesus to be among us, for his life on earth, his suffering and death, for his resurrection to new life, and his gift of the Holy Spirit. Grant, O God, that our hearts may grow in thankfulness for these and all your gifts of grace, so that as the people of new life, we may proclaim your praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And so now as we move into the prayers of intercession, I will pray sort of sentence by sentence, mentioning sort of a category of prayer. I invite you simply to speak your responses where you are, and then I will say, gracious God, hear our prayer, and invite you to respond with me, and in your love, answer. Gracious God, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. Let us be in prayer together. Compassionate God, hear us as we pray. For your church and its varied ministries, we give you thanks for this church. For those who have worshipped in this place and within this town for over 300 years, We give you thanks for this time of worship and prayer in the midst of an otherwise busy day, the gift of a time to simply be quiet and feel ourselves in your presence. Gracious God, hear our prayer and in your love answer. For the work of justice and the healing of creation. We pray, O God, for the trial in Minneapolis, for all of those who are serving in the court, for all of those of us who watch from outside, remembering the arrest and the death of George Floyd. We pray, O God, for justice. We pray, O God, for all those who've experienced trauma in the aftermath of the arrest and death of George Floyd. We pray, O God, for the just and equitable distribution of vaccination, lifting our excitement for appointments that are scheduled for those who are being vaccinated and praying along with those who are frustrated that they must wait a bit longer. Gracious God, hear our prayer and in your love answer. For the care of strangers, neighbors, family, and friends. O 
We care, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, for those who are caretakers, caretakers for family members, for parents, for children, for those who are caring for for parents or elderly relatives. We pray for those who are separated from family or loved ones because of the need to distance because of the virus, for visits that have been postponed, for vacations that have been put off, for plans that have been disrupted, for a holiday that approaching in which we may yet once again celebrate separated from our most loved ones. We pray for all of those who reach out in love and in hope to neighbors and friends. Gracious God, hear our prayer and in your love answer. For those isolated by sickness, sorrow, violence, or fear, we pray for all of those who are ill, those who are anxious or unsettled. We pray for those who feel lonely and isolated because we are not able to see each other easily or freely. We ask for your blessing. Gracious God, hear our prayer and in your love answer. For those broken by the world, we offer prayers for those who have lost hope, for those who can't see the way forward, for those who are stuck, filled with worry, unable to, to find a way forward or a way out. Gracious God, hear our prayer and in your love answer. We pray for those who face death, for those with a terminal illness, for those who are in refugee settlements around the world deprived of the food or the shelter or the clothing that they need. Gracious God, hear our prayer and in your love answer. Generous and compassionate God, in your loving purpose answer our prayers and fulfill our hopes. In all, and in all things for which we pray, give us grace and wisdom to accept your will. For the sake of Jesus Christ, amen. And let us continue together in prayer, offering our Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I wish you peace through the rest of your day. Let's join in the closing blessing. May we continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. Bless God's name. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen.